Hello and welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. Now, last week, a Hong Kong newspaper, the Hong Kong Commercial Daily, reported that the children of top Chinese leaders are being pulled back from overseas. Now, why is that happening, and what does it have to do with the Communist Party's biggest current initiative? Here today to talk about that, we have China analysts Jason Ma and Chen Jiefei. So, you know, this Hong Kong Commercial Daily reports that the children of top leadership are being brought back from overseas. Now, why is why is that? It's um, stem from the very specific. Decree or directive from top leaders, particularly the, the person who's in charge of anti-corruption campaign. His name is well known, Wang Qishan.、Uh, he happens to have no kids, so that's in- make it even more interesting than it should be. And、uh, it it is consistent with the earlier rumor that China's top leaders' kid,、uh, Mr. Xi Jinping's daughter, now enrolled at Harvard, have been called back. So what does that mean, being called back from overseas? I guess、uh, because you know. So right now in China there is a phenomenon called、uh, naked uh, official. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.、Uh, it's something basically the officials, the wife, kids, everyone have a foreign passport and live in foreign countries: Canada, U.S., Australia. And、uh, then only one person, this person, is the official in China and is still trying to make more money for their kind of、uh, people outside China. So this uh, uh, became a, such a kind of a Serious issue. They said that recently there is a kind of a kind of national. One hundred one million one point eight million people are in such a position. Right. Something. And then, for the sake of the audience, we should just tell you how the、uh, these kind of officials are pronounced in Chinese. It's called the Luo Guan. Luo Guan. Yeah. 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 yeah direct translation. Naked 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 Basically, people,、right. these people they they consider these people are the kind of the, the people who. Uh, have a strong motive motivation to be corrupted because uh, um, they have to make a lot of money to support lifestyle outside China, and then they have this kind of a backdoor. I mean, whenever something happens, they buy a ticket and then fly away. So they're afraid they're going to. It's basically two tickets,、through. one passport,、uh, two documents, one passport, one air ticket. Then you're you're, you're, you're gone. The people gone. So <laughs> so right now, kind of.、Uh, Uh, the, the, they want to kind of fix the corruption issue. They start from here, and although almost all the high-level officials, their kids are outside China. So, so basically, in order to kind of make everyone kind of be not be Luo Guan or naked officials, they start from like Xi Jinping. He brought his kids back China. But are the are the top leaders naked officials? I mean, they still have no. Them no. It, it, okay, it, it's like they are trying to fix this issue of naked officials. They they saw it at the root cause of this widespread corruption in officialdom, and they want really to fix their own roof. To replace it with something steel, before they hit stones on other stuff. Right, so they、ceilings. don't want to be in a glass they don't, house. They don't, they don't fix the vulnerabilities. Right. Yeah, right. So, right. because remember, these people are not strong men, strong men like Deng Xiaoping or Mao Zedong.、Uh-huh. Uh, lower level officials, they could fault them for the problem. They could use them as a pretext for their own behavior. So that's the motivation for Wang Qishan to do this, and it's official、uh, confirmation, a prelude uh, to uh, anti-corruption campaign. So、But、uh, I don't think.、Uh, I mean, of course, from the Western value, it looks like a weird. Like,、uh, how can your kid's life be affected by the father's gonna, position? Yeah, isn't it? Right, it's, it's kind of unfair the to the kids.、Yeah. But、uh, you shouldn't worry about that because、yeah. uh, when the kids, the kids will soon now later be back China. They study here or work here just to gain some international experience because.、Uh, They have so much kind of advantage to be in China, so it's just like、uh, make their return schedule earlier. They will be in China, living a much much kind of glorious life than here. People joke about it all the time. It's like. At the wall, those people could be made hostage you know, <laughs> to make a bargain with the Chinese government. But of course, it's a little far-fetched. It's like joking.、Yeah. But、uh, it really, I mean, these people they are being groomed as next generation of Chinese leaders. So their stay overseas have been. Uh, determined to be short, temporary.、Mm-hmm. Uh, that if history is any guidance, so the timing of the going back is only something that is、uh, secondary because sooner or later they'll go back. But so it's、uh, more like kind of shows that they're going to start a big campaign. Is that what you're saying? I, th- I think what happened because it's not just those young kids like uh, uh, President Xi's daughter who's still at school.、Uh, they mentioned the newspaper Hong Kong Commercial Daily, which is pro Beijing.、Uh, several of 
officials kids uh, they have uh, Li Yuanchao uh, Li Keqiang pre premier Li Keqiang's daughter had been confirmed to already gone back to work at Beijing University mm -hmm. which is his alpha mater mm -hmm. and we have uh, Ma Kai the Politburo member, a standing committee member. Uh, it is said that uh, his daughter had been not only finished the studies, but had started working, had been working in the Western country for a couple of years already. She had already also been called back. So it shows really their resolve and their uh, realization of vulnerabilities before they launched this campaign. Now, people have called Wang Qishan, the guy who started you know, who gave this order, supposedly, uh, you know, like the firefighter or something yeah, in terms yeah. of Chinese corruption. You know. uh, it's a, I, I have to say in this way, I mean, because the Chinese economy has no solution, mm -hmm. so the only way they can facing a slower economic growth is by kind of, a, first, uh, divide to the attention of the people. Second, make the official prepared for slower growth. We know in 2011, when the Chinese economy was slowed down, and the, but the Chinese official, they are get using to 20% of government revenue increase every year for almost a decade. They will not slow down their increase. When they see the tax is reduced, they begin to have more kind of fun people more harder like that happened like in in like uh, Shenyang kind of that's the capital of the northeast China about it. yeah and at that moment they find the people too so much everyone closed their shop I mean nobody dare to open their shop because whenever they open a shop they will be found hundreds kind of renminbi hundreds kind of or thousands of renminbi which is more than their revenue so so basically just people just close their business so this kind of thing they are saying it basically because their official has unlimited power, they can do whatever they want to maintain their revenue. Mm -hmm. And so the only thing they can kind of uh, adapt to this uh, slower growth uh, is uh, first to make sure their official can can maintain their kind of slow down their corruption speed. So this is something they can see. They, so that's the reason they put a, a strongman like Wang Qishan in the fixing the corruption because uh, without fixing the corruption. Slow down economy means uh, immediate rebellion from the people. Uh, appointment of Wang Qishan as the chief of disciplining committee, a disciplinary committee uh, to be in charge of anti corruption came as a surprise. A lot of people would think that who would we make another Zhu Rongji, the economic czar, in charge of the Chinese economy? Because he has yeah. the most. Because he had multiple right? credentials. He was into Chinese. Uh, uh, he was the uh, vice president during uh, uh, Xi, uh, Wen Jiabao's administration in charge of economy. He was very active in uh, reforming China's financial sector. Mm -hmm. uh, and he had the most strongest uh, credential uh, to be in that role. But then what is strike uh, uh, everybody as surprised is that he was actually put in this position. And Li Keqiang, whose only economic credential was a PhD degree economics, and it really had no track record economic in Liaoning province and Henan province was made the, the premier. And now it all makes sense because they have figured out uh, they have to deal with this mess left over the pre previous administration. High debts, according to Fitch, the credit rating agency, mm -hmm. the debt level has reached 200% of GDP, which was really shocking. And so they really needed to firefighter instead of to come up with new initiatives to grow the, econ to grow the economy, which they didn't believe anybody on this earth could do. So they basically dashed the hope on that score. They didn't want Wang Qishan to grow the economy. They want Wang Qishan, this expert in economy, to help them handpick, to help them to uh, get those people who are criminals, and, and then they could use them as the scapegoats for this mess. So you're saying basically uh, the idea is that Wang Qishan can't do much about the economy, so Right. He's going Nobody, to do something the, the about the Chinese economy have been cornered mm -hmm. into a very small place between hard rock and the stone. That nobody, whether it be Chinese, uh, the economist or the or the uh, uh, Friedman from America, no school of economic theory can can solve their problem. So they are trying to come up with a political solution to an economic problem. Uh, first of all, they want to secure their own job. So they were trying to send out a message that this is not our making, and we're going to uh, seek after those criminals uh, as. Uh, 
sort of uh, created by the previous administration because of financial crisis and because of the fund, the money that flowed into so the market. So the way that you're saying this, they basically believe that corruption is the biggest problem in terms no, of the yeah, Chinese but, economy. Uh, but indeed, that's not true. I mean, that's basically, a make-believe. Be make, a... make I mean, yeah. make people believe. I mean. Uh, corruption is a major issue of people's life is hard over there. But no, I call China right now situation the post-corruption thing. The whole system make people life harder. But they just make people believe if I arrest this official, arrest that official, fix this kind of small area, you will get better life tomorrow. What do you mean by post-corruption? Basically, it's uh, because uh, if uh, 89... It's, a, it's damage control, damage management. The damage is already down. The corruption is already committed. Now it's how about to fix it? How about to uh, uh, it's more reconcile than that. It's, 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 it's more like uh, it. when you're at the very beginning stage, uh, your corruption is... Uh, Still, kind of, you can identify this is the person making my life difficult because mm -hmm. of corruption. You can fix uh, people's life by arrest those corrupted officials. But if your whole system, because for example, right now the people in China, what's their life? They're the high uh, real estate market, high, right. and also the pollution. All these things is not caused by one or two corrupted officials. It's a whole economy, the whole thing. So, so I call it the the solution is already not corruption. The solution is the whole system. Yeah, I, I mean, using the American jargon, one is the system act, the corruption right. system act. Another, the Chinese bank, uh, American bank system that are too big to fail, right? Right. And so too corrupt to, to correct. That's my way of well, this, it. It's actually interesting that you say this because this is something that came up um, uh, in this article that uh, this China reporter, John Garo, wrote about talking about the Chinese military, actually, the PLA, and mm. uh, quoted a diplomat saying, you know, it's the party control that makes the PLA weak. Everything else, corruption, the hierarchy problems, everything they have is like because of the party control. So is that what you're saying here in terms right, of the right. economy? Right, something like that. Something like that. Basically, it's I call that right now China is facing a post-corruption issue. I mean, it's not already not uh, uh, something you can solve by fixing corruption. But uh, because they have no courage to fundamentally address, for example, PLA, is get rid of the control of the party. No, they can't do that. In this case, is uh, get rid of control of the party to the economy, get rid of kind of give the Chinese people a uh, rule by law. But they cannot do it because the party won't grab the power. Remember, PLA is just one institution under the wing of the party. You can easily substitute other institutions for PLA. It could be Chinese bank, state-owned enterprises. All those institutions are under tight control of the PLA. They receive oh, also the oh, benefit of the party. CCP <laughs> to right. the party, not the PLA. They got a protection from PLA for sure, but they are all in the same happy situation. Or, 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 they have this burden or over control, but also they get a benefit. They got the money uh, because they don't have accountability. A party will account for their responsibility or for their fraud. So they end up actually in a very happy situation. So what happens then when the party tries to clean up these things, like tries to clean up the corruption? Oh, I guess it's just kind of a patch. I mean, basically, if people have a cancer, they just kind of focus on these people's hands is bleeding, they patch the bleeding part, uh, and uh, make people believe uh, the cancer will disappear by itself. Uh, it's a common, uh, common belief that it's a reflection of uh, factious fighting, of uh, fighting between factions. So if one faction were losing power or losing upper hand, they could be easily the target of anti-corruption campaign. So it's really a campaign of convenience uh, in, uh, for many reasons. First is to give people some kind of reason of rationality or some kind of uh, a facade of rationality or make some people scapegoat. The other reason or purpose is to root out their political capital, uh, political uh, enemies. So is there a way to cure the cancer? That's no, I don't think so. I mean, but, uh, but it, it have a real effect. Basically, as I said, by slow down the corruption process uh, can really somewhat resolve the directly conflicting between the slower economy and uh, the greedy government. So basically, it's kind of, uh, uh, it will not solve a problem. If you not have uh, all the country, the people shut down their business because of the fan from the government, but uh, it, it will kind of slow down this process. I, I, I don't think, they just kind of drag, drag uh, the whole issue. Kind of a, because you know, coming back to that uh, issue, uh, it has been reported and confirmed that up to 100 billion, uh, 100 trillion yuan have been taken by the bank as dead. So there got to be some kind of clarification or accountability for that. 
and the mass will definitely emerge sooner or later, and the public will be panicky. So they need these people uh, to make sure uh, that you know the debt issue will be tidied over eventually. That's another reason for them to have this campaign, I think. Right, but uh, I don't think uh, the uh, still the corruption is not a major issue. But the corruption can make people feel better. Can um, anti corruption, anti anti corruption, and anti corruption can make people feel better, and uh, can make uh, the conflict in between the government and the people kind of a little bit slow down. So again, it's a patch. Basically, but uh, I think uh, that's the only thing they can do at this moment. That's the reason they put uh, the best guy they have on this thing. And uh, um, so far, it's kind of uh, make enough uh, media kind of explorer so that uh, a lot of Chinese people begin to be hopeful again. I mean, which has uh, happened for 60 years in the past. Kind of. But that, that fundamental conflict between the party control being the problem and also what they need to maintain is not something they can No, resolve. no, they can't. Because... Uh, how can you get rid of them yourself? <laughs> if they really want to do something kind of good for the country, they just kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, get rid of themselves. I mean, like oh, I, as what Taiwan's did. I mean, they 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 can get another party, and so that uh, the media is kind they of introduce open some up, new political they, system, right, right? And also kind of make the China rule by law. I mean, so many things. I mean, they they already tried something in rule by law, but uh, the resistance is so strong. For example, the labor camp thing, which is uh, totally against their own law. They even have no courage to face it. So, so basically, it's a, it's a, the fundamental thing: the rule by law, the media open, the, the kind of a multi kind of a party party system. None of them can really be implemented. But this is really an interesting year because all the all of these problems have been brewing for a long time, and they all seem to come to a head this particular moment. So this will be interesting year. I'm still I'm also curious how the government in China can cope with these other problems. Okay. Well, thank you both for joining sure. us and discussing this issue. And thanks for watching. For more on this and other topics in China, join us at ntd.tv. Mm -hmm.